Welcome to the Media Box. I'm joined first of all by Stella Assange. Stella, your husband, Julian Assange, made his uh, first public comments uh, since his release from Belmarsh Prison um, here at the Pace Assembly in Strasbourg um, this week. Very simply, first of all, why here? Well, uh, Julian is still in recovery, but he decided that he would make an exception because he had received an invitation by the committee uh, to speak to the committee uh, about his case. The committee had commissioned a report and uh, the assembly voted on it today. And he uh, thought it was extremely important to be able to address the committee, speak about his case, and also talk about the implications that his case, case has for others. Some memorable comments, of course, including him saying that he, only, he was pleading guilty only to uh, journalism. Tell us a little bit more about his message, your message, uh, that you brought to Strasbourg and to that committee yesterday. The most important thing is uh, that Julian was imprisoned and suffered because there was a grave failure. Uh, the safeguards that exist don't exist in practice. His case is the uh, clearest example of uh, transnational repression against a journalist in retaliation for what he's published. Uh, it's clear because there is a lot of information out there. There have been whistleblowers, investigations, and now this report that uh, have uh, looked into what is a, a long period of, of persecution uh, and uh, broken it down and uh, laid out the grave implications that this kind of uh, attack on a journalist uh, has for uh, press freedom more generally. Okay, so now I've asked Totte, um, you were responsible for the report that Stella was um, just talking about. Uh, its title mentions the chilling effects um, that you said it had, uh, <clears throat> that Julian Assange's case has had on, on human rights. Um, tell us about some of those effects, some of the things you, you looked into. Well, first of all, it seems to have had a chilling effect on my voice and it was a bit challenging today to deliver a speech that I had looked very much forward to delivering to find out that this morning that I had lost my ability to speak properly. But um, I nevertheless decided to persevere because of the importance of this report. And indeed, as you refer to, um, Julian Assange's detention and later conviction under the Espionage Act uh, this report, it comes to the conclusion that it had a very dangerous chilling effect, but not only that, a negative impact on the enjoyment of press freedom worldwide. Uh, this is something that the Assembly has now recognized, voted with an over, uh, overwhelming majority in favor of the report and of the resolution, and I'm grateful for that support because it sends a strong message from the Council of Europe that the treatment of Julian Assange was not acceptable. Uh, when we allow governments to chase journalists across borders in a case of transnational repression, like Mr. Assange just said, uh, Mrs. Assange uh, just said, we are allowing the squashing of the free press. We are allowing an example to be set that if you dare expose state secrets that involve abductions, human rights violations, torture, uh, crimes against humanity, uh, war crimes, uh, if we allow you know, journalists that expose these kinds of things to be persecuted across borders, we are sending a message to all journalists out there. Beware, if you do this, if you tell the public the truth about the ugly nature of war or any other state security apparatus or uncomfortable truths that the government don't, doesn't want you to expose, this might happen to you. And now this example has been set and what the report intends to do, what the report is aimed at doing is setting out recommendations about how we can prevent this from happening again. Examples including to amend the Espionage Act so that it excludes journalists. Because in the case of Julian Assange, he had no freedom of expression defense. He had no public interest defense against this very archaic and old law. So we uh, call upon the United States to revise it. And we also have some directions towards our friends and member state in the United Kingdom to revise their extradition laws so that it excludes politically motivated extradition requests. Stella, how did you feel about what you heard in the, in the session today in the assembly? 
Well, it was incredibly heartening. I mean, the assembly showed uh, a, a, what's clear. Uh, it's undeniable that this this body has recognized uh, what Julian has been through, and uh, it's also incredibly important because, as Julian said, he eventually chose uh, freedom over unrealizable justice. He isn't able to go to the European Court of Human Rights. There will be no judicial resolution um, finding that Julian's rights were violated, that the United States uh, uh, conducted a, a politically motivated case against him, that um, essential uh, press freedom rights were violated. There will be no judicial resolution. And in the absence of that, uh, it is so important that uh, the Assembly has adopted this report that investigated and came to these conclusions that recognize that Julian uh, qualifies as a political prisoner, that there, that the uh, international, the transnational repression that was conducted against him is absolutely intolerable and must be rejected, uh, and that there is a uh, stance by the members uh, of the uh, Parliamentary Assembly, who represent 46 nations, 700 million people, uh, who are now alert and aware and informed about not just this case, but the implications it has, and um, hopefully will be able to uh, also bring their uh, this into their into their national uh, parliaments and uh, adopt uh, laws that that make it safer for journalists in light of this terrible uh, precedent. Sunna Assange and Sunna Everest, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.